Hi, Nancy Bertels here, and um, here we are at episode 10 of Five Minutes in History from the pages of the Sutton Siding. We're up to the very last edition of the Sutton Siding. It was on May 22nd of 1987. Um, I've enjoyed my time reading to you guys, and I hope you've enjoyed the articles about people who used to live and sometimes still live here in Sutton. Um, the last article I've chosen is about Walt Mayer, and Walt Mayer's greenhouses are still around. He doesn't own them anymore. He's long gone. But um, it's a great article about Walt, his greenhouses, and the plants he grew. Uh, it, it's called A Display of Summer Color. Walt Mayer's Greenhouses. An abundance of color greets the eye as you step into Walt Mayer's greenhouses. A profusion of reds and purples, pinks and salmons, bright yellows and deep magentas spill forth from hanging baskets and spread across benches. Spring may have just be beginning in, April, in Alaska. Pale green birch leaves just unfolding. But at Walt's, it's as though summer is already in full swing. Already trained in horticulture techniques by the time he arrived in Alaska in 1942, Walt went to work at the Jonesville mine as a master mechanic instead, there being little work for a nurseryman here at the time. But his love for plants and for growing them continued. Once he finished building his house, Walt built his first greenhouse on his property at mile 58 on the Glen Highway in 1958. A second one followed shortly after that. Florence, Walt's late wife, helped keep the year-round greenhouses in operation while he worked at Jonesville. Orchids were one of his most popular items back then. Now that he's retired in 1979, 73-year-old Walt has tailored down his operations to fit his lifestyle. He only operates his greenhouses from March through mid-September, and by October he's ready to travel. The flowers he now grows are mostly perennials, hardy plants that need the winter's cold to complete their cycle, along with some annuals that are started by seed or transplants early in the spring. He enjoys the combination of the freedom he now has, freedom to travel to places like Australia as well as the lower 48, with the feeling that he was still working. I just didn't want to tinker around when I retired, Walt states, to have a hobby or something like that. On the contrary, he wanted to do something purposeful. Now, Walt is well known by growers and distributors throughout the valley and Anchorage areas for his high quality plants. Walt is a wholesaler, that is, he primarily grows plants for other outlets to sell. His main crops are the lemon yellowed flower Trolleus, a hardy, easy to maintain plant, and the Martha, Washing Gerani Martha Washington geranium, whose flowers come in a variety of colors, from deep magenta to the palest pink. The Martha Washington does well in Alaska, blooming all summer long because of our cool weather, Walt related. In many places outside, this particular geranium only blooms in the early spring. Once hot weather hits, hits, no flowers are produced, only foliage. Besides the Trolleus and Martha Washingtons, Walt also grows fuchsia and ivy geraniums whose blossoms spill over their hanging baskets in a variety of colors. And there are the marigolds with their rusts and yellows, impatience in their single petal beauty, pansies with their happy faces, and of course, your standard zonal geraniums with red or white, leaf, white flowers. And always willing to try something new, there are frames of experimental plants, plants to grow for a season or two while Walt learns their secrets and their needs. Three years ago, a third greenhouse was added to the operation, and last year, one was rebuilt. With business doubling last year, Walt needed some help keeping up with it all, and now local resident Katura Overby works with him, a master gardener herself and state fair winner in gardening categories many times over. Katura is the perfect assistant for Walt. Together they manage to keep up with the orders that keep pouring in. A typical day in the greenhouse business starts with a check on the plants and the houses, 
seeing what needs watering, what needs repotting or spacing, and keeping an ever vigilant eye out for the infamous aphid and white fly, the scourge of any grower. Once watering is completed, other tasks occupy their time. Tasks like the repotting and spacing mentioned above, or today it may be soil sterilizing in Walt's homemade sterilizer, or transplanting, or perhaps checking on a new variety of plant, how it came through the winter, what it might need now in the way of fertilizing, or maybe it's delivering final products to retailers. This is the busiest time of year for them, and it will continue this way until mid-June. Once the rush is over, Walt spends the rest of the summer propagating more plants for next year, establishing them in their frames by August and September, and then covering them with wood shavings before the winter sets in. Then he's free to travel at will until next March when it all begins again. And yet busy as he might be, there's always a moment to delight in an unusual, unusual blossom color, one not encountered before, or the success of an experimental variety. The love Walt showers on his flowers is evident in the beauty they return to him with their healthy, vigorous foliage and the spectacular rainbow of their flowers. So that's it. That's uh, two years of the Sutton Siding. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, if you want to look at any of the Sutton Sidings, they live at the Sutton Public Library. I think probably some of the most fun things to look at are the ads um, that people placed for their businesses, um, ads for King Mark Mountain Lodge, Charlie's Stamps, Dina's Beauty Shop, all places that um, you know and remember if you lived here during that time. Uh, and it's just fun to see what was here then. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a great time. See you soon. Bye.